many people who've bought into the plant-based mythology, they think that protein is protein. A gram of plant protein is the exact same as a gram of animal protein, and that's just not the case. How in the world can a carnivore diet do all the things that people claim it can do? You may have heard about the carnivore diet and you may have heard some of the seemingly miraculous stories of healing that people experience when they adopt a strict carnivore diet. I'm Dr. Ken Berry, a family physician, and I've been a carnivore for six years now. And in this video, I'm gonna tell you some of the proposed mechanisms as to why the carnivore diet would be able to do all of the things that people claim it can do. Now, the first thing that people hear about the carnivore diet is that you're so satiated. You stay full for so long. How is that possible? Well, the two most satiating macronutrients in your diet are protein and fat. Guess what meat is composed of? Almost exclusively protein and fat. The hunger and satiety hormones like leptin and ghrelin and all the others are tweaked in just the right way so that when you eat until you're comfortably stuffed a carnivore meal, then you stay full, you stay satisfied, you stay happy for many, many hours after that. So for many people who have food addiction, who are used to snacking constantly, eating multiple meals a day with snacks in between, this satiating aspect of a carnivore diet can really help them stop the snacking and in many cases stop eating three, four, five, six times a day. Now, the next thing is a carnivore diet is going to lower your blood sugar back down closer to normal than it currently is. Again, meat is composed of fat and protein. Neither of these raise your blood sugar like eating carbohydrates does. Any type 1 diabetic, anybody who checks their blood sugar frequently, they can tell you this. There's no argument about this. When you eat a diet that's exclusively protein and fat, your blood sugar doesn't go up very much at all. But if you eat a diet that's rich in carbohydrate, especially highly processed, ultra processed carbohydrates, your blood sugar is going to spike up. And that's very unhealthy. Not many people disagree with that fact. So anybody with prediabetes, type 2 diabetes, type 1 diabetes, LADA, MODY, all of these people are going to benefit significantly because a carnivore diet, by definition, is very, very low in carbohydrates. Now, the other piece of the puzzle when it comes to diabetes that, that's not on many people's radar and also not on many doctors' radar is insulin. So when you eat a high carbohydrate meal, if you have a normally functioning pancreas, it's going to excrete a ton of insulin to deal with the blood sugar that invariably comes from eating a high carbohydrate meal. There are multiple research studies that show that having chronically high insulin levels, hyperinsulinemia, is just as bad for you, if not worse, than having chronically elevated blood sugar, hyperglycemia. When a type 2 diabetic, a type 1 diabetic, or just even a normal person is eating the standard Western mixed diet of highly processed foods, they're going to have multiple blood sugar spikes throughout the day, which is going to lead invariably to insulin spikes as well. So many different diseases have been closely linked with hyperinsulinemia. Everything from acne to PCOS to hundreds of other conditions have been linked. And so if you're hyperinsulinemic, you're much more likely to develop and suffer from one of these many, many conditions. The next is inflammation. Now, you may have heard, you may have been told and taught that meat is very inflammatory, especially processed meat. Well, when somebody with an elevated CRP or other markers of inflammation, when they adopt a carnivore diet, do you know what invariably happens to their levels of chronic inappropriate inflammation in their body? It goes down and it stays down for as long as they're on a carnivore diet. For so many people who have chronic gut inflammation, chronic joint inflammation, chronic skin inflammation, or chronic inflammation that leads to mental health issues, when they adopt and stick to a strict carnivore diet, they notice that these levels of inflammation just subjectively go down. They feel less inflamed. But then this is verifiable by having inflammatory labs checked. And so if any of you guys are considering going on a carnivore diet, I would implore you to check your CRP and the other markers of inflammation before you start. 
and then check three months after a strict carnivore diet, recheck those labs. And I think that you'll be very, very surprised. Now, just the argument that eating meat is inflammatory, it's kind of silly on its face. And here's why. There is this principle in biology and evolution called the adaptation hypothesis. And what it says is basically that the longer a species has been doing something, then the more adapted to that they are. And the more that actually is a healthy thing for them to be, to be and to do. Cows have been eating eating grass for millions of years. And so if a, if a mainstream news story came up and was posted Monday morning and said, oh, grass is very inflammatory for cows. You shouldn't feed your cows grass. Every farmer would be like, what? That don't make no sense. Well, that's exactly the same argument that's being applied to meat. Because you see the human species, Homo sapiens sapiens, have been eating meat for our entire existence on this planet. Some uh, scientists put this figure of time at over 300,000 years. We've been eating meat for every single day of our 300,000 years on, our, on this planet, if those scientists are correct. Saying that eating meat, red meat, fatty meat, any meat is inflammatory is akin to saying that drinking clear water is inflammatory or breathing Breathing pure air is inflammatory. And so when you look at it through an evolutionary lens, it becomes silly uh, when they say things like this. Next is craving. So many people have chronic cravings for junk food. Now, I don't know many people who crave fatty red meat. You may love it. It might be delicious. You may love to eat it, but you don't crave it like an addiction. And so what people crave invariably is junk food, is highly processed, high carbohydrate food. Now, it may be some combination of sugar, fat, and salt. That's true because the food manufacturers know how to hit that bliss point so that you crave their food, but it always has to include the carbohydrates, the sugar, the high fructose corn syrup. It has to include the carbs or you cannot hit the bliss point. Part of the addiction craving model, and I do believe in food addiction. If you've experienced it, then I know you believe in it as well. Part of it is hormonally caused, part of it is neurological, and part of it's probably from your gut microbiome. And so when many people adopt a carnivore diet, they'll have intense cravings for a week or two for the junk food. But then either when their neurological system adapts or when their hormones adapt, or perhaps when their gut bacteria, gut microbiome adapt to the new way of eating, the cravings lessen significantly and in many cases go completely away. You just don't crave that junk food anymore. You only want real food when you're hungry. Now, the next way that carnivore really helps people is with weight loss. Now, how, how in the world do you lose weight eating all the fat that comes on the meat in a carnivore diet? Well, the truth of the matter is, is that eating fat does not make you fat. This is a myth or a misconception or a flat out lie that you've been told all your life, but it's just not true. We know definitely that the way you get fat is by eating high carbohydrate foods repetitively on a daily basis for months and months and years and years, having chronic hyperglycemia, high blood sugar, and then chronic hyperinsulinemia to control the blood sugar. One of the many hundreds of things that the hormone insulin does in your body is it can lock up your fat cells, which are full of fat. And if your insulin level is too high, too often for too long, then you absolutely are not allowed to burn the stored fat in your adipocytes, the fat cells. When your insulin level returns to low enough, normal for you, and stays there for long enough, all of a sudden the fat cells are unlocked and you're able to metabolize and breathe out that extra fat that you've been trying to get rid of. Another way that the carnivore diet can have the seemingly miraculous effect that it has, that it's having on millions of people all around the world is by adjusting testosterone and other hormone levels in the good direction. We've had many, many men in our private group stop eating junk food and start eating a fatty meat carnivore diet. And in just three months, they've had an increase in their total testosterone level from anywhere from 50 up to 400 points. Now, women have a similar improvement in their hormone panels as well. For those of you women who have PCOS, don't worry, it's not gonna make your testosterone go up in a bad way. It's gonna normalize all your other hormones and thus put your testosterone right where you need to be. And the way it does this is by first normalizing one of the most important hormones, which is insulin. When your insulin level comes back down to low normal, then all your other hormones can kind of fall back or fall up into the sweet spot where you feel your best. You have more energy, you have more stamina, 
you have less fatigue, you have more muscle strength, more endurance. All these come from eating what I call a proper human diet and the carnivore diet is on the proper human diet spectrum. Another way that the carnivore diet helps millions of people all over the world is by allowing them to get enough bioavailable, bioabsorbable and usable protein. Many people who've bought into the plant-based mythology, they think that protein is protein. A gram of plant protein is the exact same as a gram of animal protein. And that's just not the case. There are differences in the amino acids, differences in the absorbability and the usability of these proteins. Many people are protein deficient and they just don't know it. When they start a carnivore diet and stick to it strictly, all of a sudden they're getting all of the protein that their body needs to build muscle, to strengthen bone, to repair old and damaged cells, organs, tissues. And that's part of the reason that so many people feel so much better on a carnivore diet. Hey y'all, Dr. Barry here. I just had to jump in and tell you about my proper human diet guidebook. The very fact that you're watching this video tells me you're interested in the lifestyle that I've come to call a proper human diet. Maybe you're new to these ideas and you just need a rough guidebook to guide you through the principles of a proper human diet. Well, you're in the right spot and I've got your back. I've put the Together the ultimate guide that will lead you right back to your optimal levels of health. It's packed with my 11 principles of a proper human diet, a list of foods that you should absolutely include in your proper human diet, and a list of things that you need to avoid. We talk about everything from main courses down to condiments and spices. Following these tips, our community has helped countless people reclaim their best health. Take Nicole, for example. She's been virtually pain-free for over 22 months, all autoimmune conditions in remission. Oh, and she's also lost 134 pounds. Her last triglyceride level, a jaw-dropping 45 on her last blood labs. Then there's Rick off of all of his medications now and suffering from none of the previous chronic complaints that he used to have. Joint pain, sleep apnea, fatigue, six stents, multiple hospitalizations, and a hefty dose of statins, none of which really helped him. Now here's the best part. The Proper Human Diet Guidebook is absolutely free for you and always will be. I just want you to live your best life. Okay, that's my quick interruption. Sorry, let's get back to the video. Another way a carnivore diet can help people so much is by being so replete in vitamins and minerals. Now, this is another thing you'll hear the plant-based people saying, oh, eat the rainbow to get all your vitamins and minerals. What many of the plant-based gurus don't realize is that meat and eggs with the yolk and organ meat are the most nutrient-dense foods on planet Earth. They have more vitamins, more minerals, more amino acids, more fatty acids than any plant food on the planet. And so when you stop eating the highly processed plant foods and you start eating nutritious, ancestrally appropriate fatty red meat, eggs with the yolk, seafood, and other animal foods, you're getting, your body has access now to all of these vitamins and minerals. And unlike many of the supplements that you'll buy at the drugstore or online, these vitamins and minerals, your body actually recognizes they come with the cofactors they're supposed to be with. Your body can actually absorb them and use them in much higher amounts than you could if you were just taking that chalky tablet from the drugstore that says supplement on the side. Now, these are just a few of the reasons that a carnivore diet helps people feel better, look better, perform better, and improves their lab values. There are many, many more, and probably some we haven't even discovered yet, because, you know, people haven't really been studying a carnivore diet research-wise, trying to prove the benefits of it. They've been very busy trying to prove the opposite. So we don't have a lot of research about this yet. But what I want you to keep in mind is that what I'm recommending to you is not some weird chemical that's made in a factory. It's not some tablet or pill or injection or infusion. I'm just recommending that you eat the food that human beings have been eating longer than any other food while we've been a species on this planet. Our species has only been eating broccoli for a, a few hundred years. Before that, there was no such thing as broccoli. Did you know that? Human beings have only been eating canola oil for about 50 years. We've only been eating the other vegetable seed oils for 60, 70, 80, 90, 100 years. Before that, we never ate those. But what we have been eating for the entire 300 plus thousand years we've been on this planet 
is fatty red meat? Is eggs with the yolk? Is seafood when we had access to it? These are the foods that our body know exactly what to do with all of the nutrition packed inside the meat. Keep in mind, what I'm recommending to you is a diet that humans have been eating since before recorded history. This is not a new fad thing. This is not some FDA approved new drug with no long-term safety data. This is the diet that your ancestors have been eating since time immemorial. Hope this video helps. This is Dr. Barry. I'll see you next time.